I got a quirky one for you today. This is the PrepCom DMX40. This is a 40 meter only Morse code radio. This was sent to me by uh, James Hannibal. I have it on loan from James. And if it's quirky and a radio, you know he's probably checked it out. So um, go check him out. He's Quirky QRP, maker of many antennas and different accessories for ham radio. Uh, this was in his wheelhouse, and he thought I might enjoy taking a look at it, uh, which I did. But I have some thoughts, uh, things that we should talk about. So let's get started. So you're thinking to yourself, oh, it's a chunky, you know, QRP mono band radio, right? Well, kind of. This is actually a keyboard interfaced Morse code radio. Yes, it transmits on 40 meters, but you can actually interface this with other radios and get similar functionality out of it. What do I mean specifically? Well, this decodes Morse code. It actually does a pretty good job at it too. And with the provided keyboard, it comes with a keyboard, you can type back Morse code to the person that you're operating with. The computing device that is in here, which I'm not convinced it's not something like a Raspberry Pi along those lines, but this computing device actually does have a multitude of things that it, it can do. Not just decoding Morse code, you can also have macros of common phrases that you may say over Morse code. Other features in here streamline how you operate, taking away some of the things that you would normally be required to do if you were um, gonna be transmitting with a traditional Morse code transceiver by just putting it all on the computer side of this and, and allowing it to function that way. It does have a robust how-to menu because you are going to need to learn a new control scheme. There is no VFO on here, as you've probably noticed. You are going to have to use the keyboard to dial around and change what you want to do. James liked this radio so much he bought two. This is on loan, this is going back to James. Uh, but while he had his own at his house, uh, which is up in Northern California, I was able to make contact with him and have a two-way conversation via this device. But let's talk about the theory behind this and the philosophy, because I think that's an interesting point that may um, either help some of you find an interest in this or maybe just realize you may want to pass. In the ham radio preparedness world, and yes, that is a thing, there seems to be a huge percentage of people that are on FM, VHF, UHF radios. Think about things, right? On the HF side of the house, there's obviously nets and people meeting on the radio to talk about preparedness things or just to practice their skills in passing traffic. There's also a relatively large and growing smaller group of digital preparedness ham radios. 
I've noticed it with JSA Call. I've noticed it with WinLink, the two primary modes that a lot of people have latched onto for preparedness. WinLink in particular, they're having Net specifically designed for this getting out there and making sure you know how to use your radio, know how to how they function and what to do. And I won't say mock emergency because what we do in a mock emergency would be the same thing as a real emergency versus how we would just use WinLink normally. But the traffic that we can pass with WinLink is really impressive. And so a lot of people are flocking to that. What I think is underrepresented with preparedness minded individuals in ham radio is Morse code. So this device is attempting to get more people preparedness minded people, likely it's called the PrepCom for a reason, or that's the company, uh, to get more people interested in Morse code, because I think it's incredibly valuable for people, particularly those that are in the preparedness world, to understand Morse code. Because for a lot of folks, particularly those that go out in the field, you don't need much more than a very tiny low power output radio and just a tiny little Morse code key and an antenna and power supply, of course, to, to get up uh, out into the air and, and make contacts with people. Morse code is very forgiving in that way, and it doesn't require a computer. One extra thing that can fail. These pack down incredibly small, which this is a bit smaller than the, the PrepCom DMX40, but not that much bigger. Um, this does have its own computing body and needs the keyboard, of course, to get the functionality out of it, but I hope you get the idea. Speaking of which, I should probably mention the keyboard. The keyboard that comes in the kit is okay. It's not the greatest keyboard to type on, although you're not really going to be typing that fast on this necessarily, depending on how fast you have the keying set to. You'll have to type faster to accommodate. Uh, I, I understand, and I could be wrong on this, but this is the conversation I had with James that the keyboard that was chosen for this kit is one that is not designed, but was one of really only a few keyboards that functions with this radio. So you can't just swap this out to a foldable keyboard or something that, you know, a keyboard that you really like. You kind of have to use this supplied keyboard. There's only a couple other keyboards on the market that will actually interface with this radio correctly. So just keep that in mind. This is an inexpensive keyboard. It is incredibly light, so you could pack this without problems but just know that going in. Now the promise of this that I found the most intriguing was not just, hey, let's use this as a radio. I mean, yes, but uh, no, what I wanted to do was I wanted to connect this to my 705. That way I can use all of the en enhanced radio features on the 705, work all bands on HF, maybe even Morse code on VHF, UHF. So open up band possibilities and use a device like this for decoding and then transmitting via the keyboard. I thought that was the, the ticket. I thought that's exactly what this, how I could tell people about this and get them excited. The problem I found was that it actually doesn't work that well in that capacity. And let me explain. The PrepCom DMX40, if you're feeding in audio for it to decode, it wants it to be at a wide bandwidth. And that bandwidth of the radio needs to be offset to a point where this can be picked up and decode the information. The problem with that is to feed this correctly, you have to be offset from the transmitting frequency of the radio when you start to send the keying out. So you have to use RIT. And if you're unfamiliar with RIT, it stands for Receive Independent of Transmit. What that means specifically, if you are a Morse code operator and you have a tiny little radio and you're out on a summit or somewhere and you start getting a big pile up and you've got stations calling in, they may even be calling over the top of you and not waiting for you to respond. So a lot of people use RIT where they will transmit or they will offset their receive from where they're transmitting and tell people up five or up 10 or whatever. Then you're listening on this offset receive frequency and transmitting on the other. It keeps people off of your transmit frequency. At least that's the idea. That's what this works on basically from what I could tell. Cause again, we've got to get the audio in at the right Hertz location for the audio tone for it to be picked up and then decoded. It can't be right on the center frequency that you would potentially be receiving like with the 705. So I found that I would have to find a frequency that was you know, who, whatever, working with James or her, someone out on the, on the bands, find someone operating CW, center that frequency, then use RIT to dial this into getting the decoded data audio correctly. And I, I realize that I'm, I'm going over this too shortly. 
What this wants is like 2400 hertz bandwidth. Morse code traditionally is 400 to 500. So what's happening is the center frequency for your radio where you want to transmit on is offset from where this is looking for to receive. So you need to skewer the receive and it's a fine tuning job. It's not up five or I can't just give you a number. You have to adjust it until it starts to decode accurately. And then you're kind of in the wheelhouse. So it's a bit fudgy when you have to work with it in that you constantly have to make a change for it to uh, appropriately start decoding. And you need that decoding to work because it's it's keying off of the keyboard and you know that's the way you'd have to handle it. And this is aimed at people who don't understand Morse code, so the decoding is kind of vital. With that said, this decodes perfectly on 40 meters. You just find the frequency where someone is transmitting, you leave it there, and this starts to work. There are a couple of modes that this uses for decoding, and you can switch between them. If, it's, if you feel like you've zero beat the station, and zero beating is being on the same frequency as they are transmitting for receiving, uh, then you just change through the one or two modes it has, and then all of a sudden it starts to work. It's pretty straightforward. And if at any time you get stuck, there is a help menu that's on the radio. You just click help and it's a, right on the bright screen. It's very effective for that. So yeah, if for some reason you decide to pick this up and you have aspirations of connecting it to another radio for uh, doing independent control or doing the decoding and transmitting into your other radio, make sure that you get yourself a little dummy, dummy load. You would have to be SMA male and I think I got like a five watt dummy load, just a little tiny thing and you should make sure you screw it onto the SMA connection. There was a comment that was made and it's possible that newer versions of this, if there is newer versions of this, I don't really know, that this is putting out RF even when you have it in this keyboard or this audio bypass mode and that you could potentially damage the radio. I don't know if there's actually any cases of that, but James definitely told me if I was going to use it in that capacity that I needed to get a dummy load and put it on, which I did because I don't want to blow up his radio. The other issue that was sort of problematic that was on the groups.io uh, page was comments and questions about people wanting to use an iambic paddle with this. And the creator's concept behind this is actually not really for people that know Morse code or want to actually manually create the dits and daws and the characters. They, he wants you to use the keyboard. Okay, sure, that's why it's defined. If, if you just can use a key, go use a key or go use a decoding app or something like that, blah, blah, blah. So this doesn't really work with iambic paddles. It works with a straight key only. And I've heard that on the post, the creator said he's going to look into adding iambic paddle support, but at this time, it does not. I love to bring quirky products like this to you guys. It's not for me. Um, I think that if this was a bit more refined and then I could just plug it into my 705 and it would decode, that would be more intriguing, but for me, it's kind of like, I just want to learn Morse code and then get on with it. I feel like the more things you add onto Morse code, it starts to take it away from that ham radio romantic uh, style of, you know, having a tiny little thing that fits in a coin purse that you take out in the field and throw a little wire up in the air and, and get to operating. This just adds more stuff to the chain, which I feel is valuable for some folks. It's just not really for me. At the time of recording, the DMX40 is $349. I will leave the link in the description for the creator's website so you can check it out. Hey, big thanks to James, Quirky QRP. Make sure you go check out his link for his Quirky QRP Etsy store, where he comes up with things like the Slink Tenna and many other devices that I've talked about on my channel that are definitely quirky and sometimes a lot of fun to play around with ham radio and have more fun doing it, right? Ham radio is supposed to be fun, and quirky products are definitely fun. If you enjoyed this video, consider giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Also subscribe. I live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. And Ham Nation, I'm now hosting and producing Ham Nation every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. And if you want to know which other every other Wednesday it is, just make sure you click that bell and click the all so that you get notified every time I post something. Okay? I'm Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks so much for watching the Hammer to Crash Course. And I'll talk to you later. See ya.